Hi everyone, my name's Shardo. Hi, and I'm Heidi. And we're just um, here to really discuss some things that have been happening recently. Um, there's a lot of accusations being made against us specifically, yeah. the women that um, are assisting um, the church, BDS, Breakthrough Deliverance Sanctuary. And it's, uh, it's pretty interesting what's being said. And um, I don't know, how do you feel about what's going on? Um, you know, I, I know that we're supposed to um, rejoice in, in these persecutions when this stuff happens. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a total shock, um, but I do believe that we, we have the right to, to come against what has been recently the lies and accusations that have come out against this ministry, mm -hmm. against us personally. Um, and so that, that's what we're doing. That's why we're making this video because you know, you guys deserve to hear both sides of, of the story. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing today is giving you our side and the truth of what is actually happening. So Yeah, especially when there are people out there that, you know, really can't get over their own personal problems and their own mm -hmm. personal uh, vendettas against the people here mm -hmm. and they just spend all their time you know really exaggerating small issues and really you know just they, mm -hmm. hyping everything up yeah. for years they make it their their life's ambition their life's goal to destroy the work of God to destroy what we're doing here in this ministry. And that is what this is really about. I want you guys to all understand this. Um, Raven, we genuinely do love you. And when you were here, the short time you were here, I personally spent many, many times with you in fellowship, in counsel, in prayer. We. We took we, you we, in we under our wings. Yeah. As, as women, we mm -hmm. even fellowshiped and had quite a few conferences where people... For those of you who are pretty much in the dark about this, you don't really know what we're talking about. We had um, a close brother of ours and his wife move out here for a couple weeks. They've been here for a couple weeks now. And from the moment... Um, they came here, you know, they've had their own issues. And um, to make a long story short, we'll get into the gist of what happened with them, which by the way, has nothing to do with BDS specifically. But what's been happening is that we've had um, long time uh, attackers, Josh and Raisa, um, some of you might know who they are. They're very, very bitter people. They have been um, using very specific uh, situations to make videos against us and come against our ministry and come against the woman at this ministry mm -hmm. and the pastor of this ministry. And um, to make a long story short, when John and Raven, the couple that moved out here, had their marital problems. Josh and Raisa were conspiring with this man's, this John's wife, basically. Even before they got here, we had messages from Josh's wife saying that um, they were going to plan a video together, Josh, Raisa, and John's wife together against the ministry. And this happened way before they came out here. So after they came out here, John's wife, I don't know what, ha 
what happened with her, she is very, a very uh, unstable person, very depressed, and she's got mental issues with social anxiety and all this stuff. And she just took off. Um, she was six months pregnant. She took off, left her husband in the middle of um, a nap that he was taking. And a very deceptive um, move that Josh and Raisa had planned out and mapped out for John's wife. Very deceptive, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And anyway, she ended up at Josh and Raisa's house. And we believe pretty much that, you know, they're, they have used this poor girl in first breaking up her marriage with her husband because they were in it the whole time messaging with her and planning this with her and eventually they got her to move and leave her husband now she's going to be a single parent mm -hmm. cannot function in normal society mm -hmm. doesn't even have a license to drive yeah, and there I believe they're gonna drop her like a hot potato oh, yeah yeah just I want to just say something really quick. Raven, these two people, Josh and Raisa, do not care about you. They do not love you, okay? I'm, I'm telling you the truth of what's going on here. And as the only reason they had flown you back to where they live is specifically to ruin the ministry. They, want, they, to, had they had an agenda. They had an agenda. And you were, as people call it, the patsy. You were the fall guy. Exactly. And as soon as they are done using you for what they need you for, they are going to drop you. It's going to They're going to drop you. Mm -hmm. We tried to help you. We tried to to get you to, to grow in your walk with the Lord, you know. Um, we prayed deliverance for you. We counseled you. We fed you. And we went on barbecues yeah, together. Yeah. We have video footage yeah, of us going on yeah. barbecues. We have we have evidence of more than four people that were that were in a group together mm -hmm. with us women mm -hmm. when Raven confessed all sorts of things like being a pathological liar. Yep. She lied to her husband about having endometriosis. Then yep. when she got pregnant and we all thought it was a miracle. She felt convicted. She told us, oh, she lied about it. She never mm -hmm. told her husband these things. Mm -hmm. Even before she left, he knew he nothing know. about it. He, yep. She hardly ever told her husband anything. He was there for her the whole time. He catered to her every way. Yeah. And he really did not deserve this kind of thing that Josh and Raisa has encouraged this woman yeah. to do to her yeah. family, yeah. broke them apart. I think it's pretty hypocritical, Josh, in your video about Chris, that yeah. he wanted you two to divorce and he wanted to break exactly. up a marriage. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what the two of you have done. Doing, right. You're not right. counseling her and telling her, look, let's you know work this out between the two of you you know no none of that this was all for one purpose and one purpose only and that was to destroy this ministry it's a, it's a selfish a selfish motive mm -hmm. on the on the, the rug you, yeah you guys are underhanded and you're very deceptive and wicked very wicked yeah. anyway so what this what Josh and Raisa did was they used this situation that happened to this brother and sister. They got John's wife over at their house. And basically what they did was use the situation to tag um, problems that my husband and I had two years ago when we were doing ministry here in, at BDS. So what happened back then, I think, it's, I think it's better if I could clarify exactly what happened because a lot of people are still uh, wondering, you know, they're, they're I'm sorry, um, I need to stop it, but I, 
if she's going nuts like this. I don't want to distract people that are All right. Uh, well, watching you it. You could feed, feed her and then we we'll start um, back. Okay. You know, I think at this point, it would make it easier for a lot of people to understand exactly what happened during our conflict. Um, the conflict between my husband and I that Josh and Raisa keeps bringing up. I think I'm gonna go in detail and clarify what happened back then so that you have an understanding of what we were going through and exactly how it happened, okay? Now, back then, about two years ago, before the church was finished, my husband and I were under a lot of pressure. We were not only getting used to each other, we were newly married, I think we were about two and a half to two and a half years into our marriage, I believe. Um, and at that time, it seemed like we were under the most pressure. There, it was spiritual pressure, it was physical pressure, it was financial pressure. Back then, we didn't have a lot of um, money. My husband was working on building the church pretty much by himself. I mean, he hired people to do certain things, but he pretty much single-handedly laid the foundation and put the walls and everything all the everything into this the building of the church so on top of that being exhausted he had a job and he had a job in a factory where the conditions were not suitable for you know someone that's building something and working full time trying to make ends meet for his family and just then, um, he had to take his gallbladder out. A series of things happened at the same time. He was so busy working on the church. I started to feel a lot of pressure emotionally because we were always ministering to people. People would bop in from different states and different countries. I had to cater to them. My husband had to drop what he was doing and pray for them. And we kind of grew apart a lot. Our communication was breaking down. And I started to feel tremendous pressure emotionally. So I started to act out. And at, at that point, I did not know what respect really was. I had not learned from experience yet. And I was just trying to pull my, my weight by just following what the Bible said without the experience and without really understanding what it means to be respectful to my husband. And now, now that I've been, you know, growing in that area and we're a lot better and we're, I, I can listen to him and take his advice more readily, things have changed drastically. But back then, it seemed like everything was falling apart. Suddenly, my husband got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. We had to change, I had to figure out to change our diets, and all this stuff was going on while Josh and Raisa had just moved in to our place. They were staying because Josh was invited to be a part of the ministry and minister with my husband. Now, there were a lot of things that were not going on with uh, the what my husband expected from Josh. Um, that was not happening. Mm -hmm. The expectations were poor. Um, when I say that, I meant Josh was not living up to my husband's expectations as a leader, someone that can co-run this ministry and my husband started to get frustrated we started to have a lot of arguments a lot of spiritual tension built up and you know I felt at that time spiritually I was being moved against my husband and it happened so quickly that I never really thought things 
through before I did them and I, I wasn't ministry minded in that regard that I was only minding my emotions at that time because of everything that was going on. So I acted out a lot. I said a lot of things that I didn't really think through. I said a lot of things that hurt my husband, you know, things that I really can't take back, but I've apologized for and we've, we've sorted it out a long time ago. Unfortunately, I have to keep dealing with this situation because Josh and Raisa, you know, they really want um, to destroy people's marriages. So they are cons they're very um, consistent. Oh, yeah. they've, <laughs> got a, they've got their goal and they've got their eyes yeah. exactly on what they're trying yeah, to do. So they, and they're, they're going to rehash it and rehash it until they achieve what they're trying exactly. to achieve. Exactly, and we and know it's that. Wicked. We know that. Wicked. You know? Anyway, um, what happened was I had an argument with my husband, and um, we got to a point where he was done with it. He was done with my behavior. At that time, I was very selfish. I didn't think about anyone else. And I certainly wasn't thinking about him because I was so much in myself and in my own mind concerning my emotional um, needs. And I wasn't looking at how much my husband was putting out in other areas and sort of helping him to deal with that. So there was a, a pretty much a divide mm -hmm. in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day he told me, if you want to leave, you can leave. So I think I explained this in, my, in the video that I did. I addressed this issue before, but now I'm going to get a little more detailed. Um, I went back to the church. I felt moved, spiritually moved against my husband. I felt like, okay, I am going to leave. And I came back at the church while he was working, and I was all hyped up. And I knew that it, nothing good would come from whatever was about to happen, but I did it anyway. So I really didn't listen to that still small voice mm -hmm. that was telling me not to do that. I went along with that, and when I got back to the church, all the guys were outside. My husband was working on the stone um, pathway for the church, part of the foundation. And I remember asking him for a phone call and we were so financially tight, he had told me a lot of times that we can't afford to call back home to the Caribbean because it took a lot of money to make those calls, even a half hour took a lot from us and all we had was money for food. So I didn't quite think about that when I decided I'd tell him I need a phone call because I want to leave. And he told me, you know, I, you can't make a phone call right now because it's too expensive. And I kept demanding a phone call and he told me to leave the church. At this point, I felt like he didn't answer my question. I felt um, adamant to leave the church. I did not leave, and that got him even more upset. So he decided to usher me from the church, and he started walking me home, and I didn't like the way that he was doing things, so I got up into his face, and he felt, at that point, he felt challenged, he felt disrespected, and it turned into a I would say, what was it? It wasn't like a fight where we were, um, there wasn't any punching or anything like that. It was just like him trying to disarm me. So he put me on the floor and I got back up to fight him and he did it again. And that was what happened at the church. Now when I went back at the house, things were still heated. I was still going on about the phone. He took the phone and he put it away and he said, you can't have it until you calm down. And we went at it for a while. 
and all this stuff. So after a while, I decided to go and talk to Josh's wife, Raisa, because at that time, I think she was the only woman here at that time. And I, I didn't really feel comfortable going to the other brothers to, to talk about my marriage, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I trusted that, you yeah. know, at least a woman would be able to give me some good advice that would help me mm -hmm. at least to communicate better. And what Josh's wife did, I'm pretty sure she had her own agenda long before any of this happened because she decided to coach me into writing my husband a letter. Now, I know my husband is not into reading letters. Mm -hmm. I knew it in my, in my spirit that mm -hmm. that wouldn't go well either. But again, I did exactly what I felt was not right. So I penned this letter that she coached me to write. And I, I, I wrote it and I waited. And when my husband came back home, I gave it to him. That made him very upset because in the letter there were a lot of things that she had kind of you know buttered me up to think like i i wrote a lot of things that were against him instead of making mm -hmm. a bond it was breaking mm -hmm. the bond you know yeah. so he got very upset yeah. and that is what another brother that was there that day recorded our argument over the letter that Josh's wife told me to write okay now this put us in a very bad situation where now we have this letter problem and that's this is the this is the argument within my marriage that happened two years ago maybe over two years ago mm -hmm. that is is bombarding me every mm -hmm. I can't I can't it's it's like Josh and Raisa they they're so wicked and calculating that they bring this back up over and over and over again very demonic situation yes. I don't yes. know how in the world these people live with a clear conscience because we have witnessed, I mean, not you, Heidi, you weren't here at that time, but I think everyone that was here at that time witnessed Josh and his wife having lots of problems. And not only did they not know how to communicate, but they cursed at each other regularly, you know? There was a lot of things that Josh did not say about mm -hmm. their relationship when they were going at each other but he, he tends to play the holy game and bring our situation mm -hmm. to life over and over and mm -hmm. over again, our, our, our um, argument that we had to life over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, this woman, Raisa, she is, she, she, she always told me things to make me feel like, oh, my husband isn't, uh, good enough or my husband isn't doing his best or he, oh he's not like my husband and Josh just you know he just did everything that Raisa wanted to do mm -hmm. and I had the wrong idea about the relationship mm -hmm. looking at that yeah my expectations were starting to line up with what Josh was allowing his wife to do to him and my husband was not gonna have that you know so mm -hmm. you can imagine that was a problem you know what i mean so eventually things started to come to light in josh and race's marriage because after a while we we started to find out that they're not exactly the perfect little things that they're they're making everyone feel they are Sometimes we would walk past their cabin and we would hear her um, telling Josh off ev almost, almost every other night. It was ridiculous. 
you could hear their voices through the cabin. You know what I mean? And she would do it when they were not in the room with other people. Mm. That was the difference. Like my husband and I, we hushed things out in front of the brethren. Mm. That's why everyone knows about it. And there's nothing else that exists mm -hmm. that you guys don't know about. The, the same argument that we had two years ago was the only argument that we had that you can hear about because that's all that happened yeah. you know and that's exactly what satan does he he accuses you over and over and over again for past sins you know and i've been here for a year now this month it's been one year and i haven't seen them fight not one time in fact her growth both of them they've actually counseled Philip and I with problems a newlywed marriage in with with us you know mm -hmm. they have they have counseled us and and um, and helped me grow in as a wife and um, and just seeing the two of them and where they are at today in their yeah. marriage it is beautiful what the Lord has mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. on both of them so where is the fruit in all of this you know I mean you guys that's all you can come up with yeah. that's all you've got is let me, coming up let with me that. tell you Heidi there were times when we were all like at, at BDS we usually fellowship with each other it's not any special uh, thing that we have to film all the time we fellowship all the time with no cameras. Mm -hmm. We pray for each other all the time with no cameras. Mm -hmm. We're a family yes. here with the people that are here. Yes. And no one else can say anything. Uh, no one else can say anything else. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens here. We're family. Mm -hmm. And when people come here, we pray for them, we counsel them, and they go back home and they're fine. Mm -hmm. They now have their responsibility to walk with the Lord. There's no yeah. kind of dependence or cultish connections mm -hmm. that people are trying to say is happening. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. People go home and they have their own walk to maintain with Christ. Exactly. It's not about yeah. Chris. It's not about me. It's not about BDS. We specifically focused on creating a place where people could come exactly. for help and that was what all the the um pressure was about mm -hmm. just making this place possible for people to be mm -hmm. able to come for help mm -hmm. you know there was a lot of times when we fellowship together in my home when josh and Rasa were in our cabin and you know this might be a little funny mm -hmm. but Josh would be sitting with my husband and they'd be talking about ministry and so on. And it would be about 8.30, 9 o'clock, maybe 8.30, a little early, you know. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Rasa would just stand up. His wife would just stand up. And Josh would like freeze up <laughs> because he knows that it, wow, she like trained him so well mm. that he knew mm that that was their cue to leave that was their cue <laughs> oh so my she gosh. would stand up and if he didn't move i'm telling you guys this is no <laughs> this is no joke if he did not get up when she got up she would walk to the door and stand up and give him a nasty look until oh. he said all right chris um i'm gonna see you later it's time to go it was wow. it was incredible <laughs> It was incredible to witness you guys. No joke. This is what, this is the extent of the example. control that mm -hmm. was happening between him and his wife. It was not a healthy, it was mm -hmm. not a healthy biblical marriage like they're making you believe. Mm -hmm. They're feeding you mm -hmm. an illusion. Yes. Yeah. It's an illusion. No one has a perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. There is tough times, there's times when you need to get over things, there's times when you need to compromise, there's times when you don't compromise, mm -hmm. and there's times when you go through good, 
periods of life and great times and financial freedom and then there's other times when it's Ecclesiastes yeah. in every marriage, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. time for everything. And what these people are not showing you is that they have the exact same things going on in their marriages mm -hmm. and they don't say that. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had the exact same physical problems going on in their marriage also that they never got up on camera and shared with any of you. And I don't feel like sharing it either. Let them, let them feel guilty about doing the things that they did and leaving stuff out about mm. themselves and not being transparent with you people because they're not transparent. Mm -hmm. Everything about their channel now is about us coming yeah. against us. Yep. It's ridiculous. That's the, mi that's the ministry it's now. It's absolutely ridiculous. His ministry now is to tear apart. They're bitter. Mm -hmm. They're resentful and yep. bitter. You can just see his wife's face on it's all over her on face. that camera. Yeah. You just yeah. It, you don't you don't even have you can to see be the spirit 25 years old to discern the things that they say in their video, the emotional hype that they put into their video, the way yeah. they structure those videos, and the things that they they tell people to say, like they so really coaxed John's wife. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. feel really sorry for him. I I feel bad for our brother because look at what they did. Yeah, that girl has not one claim to land on John at this point. Not a she single one. She was six one. months pregnant when she up and left because mm -hmm. Raisa called her over. Flew, they paid for a flight to fly her out there. If that's not calculating and wicked, what does that I don't say know what to you is. Guys? Exactly. I don't know what is. Yeah. You know? It's, and they took advantage of the fact that she is so impressionable, you know? And someone I think that has such a um, a strong dominating type of Personality. behavior like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is gonna completely feed off of someone like like Raven mm -hmm. and um, and it really is it's sad it's really sad because they are they're just making it their life's mission to destroy the works of God I have I noticed it and saw it from the very beginning mm -hmm. the first couple minutes of his video that Josh did I saw the evil in it oh, and yes. I knew it I knew yeah. immediately what was going on yeah. and um, yeah I think it's really funny too you know um, with them trying to come up with this whole cult thing mm. right and Chris is just they're so linking, controlling and he's he's such they're a they're linking the word cult with the word abuse yeah. to deceive people and narcissist <laughs> we, we know that mature smart people will not fall for something yeah. that juvenile mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean I was gonna say um, yeah you know with the control thing and them trying to make it seem like he you know is this cult leader if anything chris doesn't want to have control over anybody he that doesn't. comes here he in fact he control. says over and over again i'm not going to babysit that person that person's going to do what they're going to do now yeah there's obviously there's there's guidelines there's biblical guidelines if you want to be a part of this ministry right. that is right. biblical you know um but as far as him just trying to control everybody in their minds it's an absolute joke no it's an absolute joke but they have to come up with that right they've got to come up with that you know they've got to come up with um mm -hmm. this video that raven did was not about john and raven's marriage mm -hmm. and i really hope they you guys her. can see the truth they, yeah. they used her this was all about again destroying a the marriage between Sharda and Chris and that spirit weighing just trying to come it. back mm -hmm. in. Weighing on it. They're, she's, she's, very, she's a very uh, manipulative kind of woman, Risa. Yeah. She, she's very determined. You can see that. And she leads Josh so effortlessly. Yeah. With ju just a look. 
I'm yeah. telling you. Just well, no, I've look. seen the look now because before I didn't, you know, I only knew what was going on when I watched the video. I knew that there was something that was wicked going on um, behind what he was saying. Um, but actually seeing it seeing for yourself, it for right. myself and mm -hmm. seeing that look on her face, it's a look of satisfaction. Yeah. It's a look of there, take that. Yeah. That's yeah. all this was about, you guys. That's all this was about. We helped Raven. We were there for we her. We were there for her the whole time. I, and she's wondering why no one contacted her after she went, uh, she basically went, uh, just disappeared. Disappeared. She mm -hmm. disappeared. She left her husband mm -hmm. a note in the fridge with two sentences. He really did not, he really did not deserve that kind of treatment no. at all. No. And why she's didn't wondering she come to why us? She never, she claims in the video that she's been talking to us about this and an that is not lie. true. That's there a lie. There was never anything that she talked to us about or we would have spoken we, to her about it. Exactly. What she did talk to us about was was all different things. One time she came up to me and told me that she was attracted to me, that she had been in lesbian relationships and she had done things with, with other women. And we asked her, right, mm -hmm. if it was just like petty things like kissing and she said no, right? She yeah, said deep, she like had, deeper things. Mm -hmm. So she pretty much had sexual relations in mm -hmm. lesbian relationships. Mm -hmm. And then she's coming to me saying she, uh, she's uh, sorry that she felt an attraction for me, which made things very uncomfortable yeah. mm -hmm. between all of us because we were in a group as women fellowshipping. It was very bizarre, you know? It was just bizarre a constant, behavior. awkward, mm -hmm. and we just chalked it up to her just, just being demonized, mm -hmm. needing a lot, a lot of, of deliverance, mm -hmm. which we were giving her. Yes, we and, were praying um, for her all the time. And just trying to, to get her to eventually grow into that bold, strong woman for the Lord. That we thought was That we there. thought could happen for her. Right. You know, and and the, the social, the, the awkwardness and, and not even really um, wanting to open up to us. She would isolate herself. You know, we yes. would try to speak to her and then she's she would disappear she's, and she would, yeah, she's she not would. stable, you guys. She has a lot of mental problems. She's very mm -hmm. weepy, yeah. weeps all the time, you know. All the time. I think yeah. if her husband just walked past her and bumped her on her shoulder, yes. it would be a problem. Yeah, it was. I think mm -hmm. she's very in, in her mind, in her head. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've told people Just like this many head. times to, to avoid that because then you get locked in your own uh, world yeah. and yeah. out of touch with reality and I think mm -hmm. that's what happened with Raven you can see it all over her face yeah. she gets detached she doesn't know what to say she has no claims she's got to make things up here mm -hmm. and there insert mm -hmm. a lie a little lie over here a little lie over there make mm -hmm. everything come together and I think Josh and Raisa did a good job coaching her on what to say she was in that video. Definitely coached. You can tell she. You can tell she was coached. All of it, you know, even down to what they put her in, which they had her um, wearing in a big sun hat, and and Very all of that. You know? All of that, you know. Yeah, they they definitely tried. <laughs> yeah, they definitely tried. I tell you what, it's a sad thing because now John doesn't have his he she left with their child in her she is about to give birth in a in two about two months mm -hmm. two and a half months i would say and john's not going to be able to see his first son you know so that is terrible i hope that josh and Rasa repent and reconcile this woman back to her yes. husband that yes you know what i don't even know if 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 um if if they should i don't i don't know yeah. what they should do. i i have no idea what they're gonna do in this situation but i'll tell you this those two over there in arizona josh and Raisa, you guys better 
learn to discern them properly because they are not what yes. they are making you think they are. Mm -hmm. No matter how many sermons mm -hmm. they repost from other ministers and rob other ministers' work to feed you guys, that's never going to cover up who they really it, are. And it was never about them having true love for the never, brethren. Never. Never. It they was don't, never they about don't that. have that kind it's of thing. It's always been about selfish gain. Exactly. Like Josh even said in his video, he thought he was going to be somebody. Somebody, right. By his own words, right there, you know, he, he let you guys all know no. exactly mm -hmm. where his heart was and why he came here. And if you look at that video that they made um, John's wife, make, they, they coached her to make, if you look at that video, you'll see everywhere she made a claim about her relationship with her husband. Now, that has nothing to do with BDS. They use that and pin BDS right on top of they it. They needed that. You guys, mm -hmm. this is a separate mm -hmm. situation going on. Someone's family is being broken mm -hmm. up by these two, uh, these two deceived people that think they're doing God's work when they're not. They put little snippets of information there saying, well, it wasn't really this, it was this. And then she would make another claim, like she was saying that um, he doesn't give her any food. And then they put a little snippet in there saying, well, not no food doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean an empty mm -hmm. fridge. Mm -hmm. What we know is that they never had mm -hmm. an empty fridge. Mm -hmm. Raven was so spoiled, she didn't want to cook. She did not want to cook for herself. She wanted her husband yep. she to told cook you guys everything that in for the her. She didn't want to do mm -hmm. any chores. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to take any sort of responsibility. She says that she was young and foolish and that she was led by lust. Meanwhile, you guys don't know that she just got married a year ago. So her being young and deceived was just a year ago when she was 19 because now she's about 20. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense and I hope Josh and Raisa repent but I think it's way past. I don't, I don't know. see that I happening. The Lord could do whatever he wills. I feel really really afraid for Josh and Raisa. I feel really afraid mm -hmm. to consistently try to ruin other people's relationships by bringing up past issues good. and all these things against the brethren. Mm -hmm. You guys are accusers of the brethren. That's what That's you exactly are, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to argue about. There's absolutely nothing. Everything's on the table. Mm -hmm. I, I admit that I was responsible for provoking my husband many times. I've grown a lot stronger in discerning when I am not being like aware of my spiritual state. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've grown in discerning when something is wrong and when something is right and I know not to make the same mistakes I did back then. Mm -hmm. So you know these people that left they have stayed the same until now yeah. there was no change yeah. in them mm -mm. not at there all there was no change not in at them. all no growth or anything and it's it's really sad and unfortunate um i want to just um also just address a couple things to um while watching that video that uh i definitely need to come on here and and straighten out mm -hmm. um the first thing, Josh saying that um, he thinks he knows why I'm here and that I'm happy here yeah. and I'll probably never leave here. He's right, and I, I told him that. You're right, I am never going to leave here as long as the Lord wants me here. He has called me here to serve him. Yeah. And I do that before anything else, before my family, before anything. He is number one in my life and he will be until I take my last breath. Um, but I believe he was insinuating because of my um, circumstances being a single mom. Maybe, oh, she's got a free ride here at this ministry. She's not going to want to ever leave. Um, she needs Philip probably and, and 
in his Something finances. About loans. Um, yeah, in the loans. So I want to just address that. I want to say, first of all, um, you guys have no idea how much, just between Philip and I, how much we have financially, okay? Because we, the Lord has blessed both of us in our situations abundantly, abundantly. And we, we pay back into him. We are so thankful for what he's done, but we could live anywhere. We could have a house right now. We could, we could be in California. We could be anywhere, anywhere with what Philip and I make together, okay? Um, so a loan that was taken out that, by the way, Chris has already paid off. See, you guys keep trying to rehash things, but you don't know even know on. what is going on. <laughs> the loan has been paid off, and why would that? Why would we feel forced to stay here over a measly four thousand dollar loan with Home Depot? That makes absolutely no sense. You know, we stay here because we serve the Lord. I know for me and my walk, it has grown tremendously since yeah, I have been here. Trem oh my gosh, just the growth that the both of us, and just seeing, because I've only known you for one year. I know. And the growth that, that you have uh, have gone through and, and our spiritual walks with Christ in delivering us daily. You know, we all, I believe this was totally the Lord last night. The Holy Spirit just fell on us and we just we decided to all pray for one another and we all pray deliverance yeah, for one yeah, another and really praise good. God we all got really great deliverance yeah. and it was almost like you know he did know that that this was gonna come out just a couple hours later that this wickedness was gonna happen and um, but that's just an example of of the growth that that we've gone through since being here and my son too my son um just being so happy here and and having a father in his life that that truly truly loves him like his own and it's beautiful because that's that's how our father is with us he adopted us it's like he set up the same thing yeah. with philip and, and and my child and it's beautiful and so um I just want to I want to clarify that because um, you know there's a time when yes you know we don't need to defend ourselves yeah. but when it comes yeah, to defending but, mm -hmm. the the work that we're doing for Jesus Christ we're going to defend yeah. him until our last yeah. breath I mean so and we're going to we're going to iron out any bumps and mm -hmm, clarify things if you guys really don't understand so that you're not deceived by all kinds of things that are swimming around out there. I mean, a lot of I deception. think I've had enough of people contacting me and telling me, oh, hang in there, all this stuff. I've had enough like of it. And every time I answer <laughs> them, they're asking me if I'm Chris. No, you guys, I have my own <laughs> channel. I answer my own comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you she think it is? Mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, now we're we're in a, a better uh, financial state than we were before. Things have, Please the God. pressure has lessened. My husband's in good health. Yeah. We're doing great together. He's we're in a better place. I'm more mature mm -hmm. as a wife. I, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that I was terribly mm -hmm. immature. I'm so happy I did not lose my husband mm. at these low points in, mm. in, in our lives. I'm grateful for what I have in him. And it's a beautiful thing. But now it's, it's pretty unfortunate that we have to deal with these kinds of things coming up over and over again. So Josh and Raisa, will you guys just, just you know, I don't know. Have, a, have your own life, you know what I mean? Live your own life. No one wants to hear about you two anymore. Josh, We've had enough yeah. of, of the two of you, mm -hmm. you know? We Josh. are moved on to greater things. We've seen yeah. so many people get delivered, mm -hmm. set free. We've had 
quite a number of conferences. We're gonna have mm -hmm. one again soon. Mm -hmm. And it's just a beautiful thing when everyone comes together from all over the world, you guys. They it's come beautiful. here, yeah. we fellowship, people get prayer, mm -hmm. and we eat together, and it's great. So it's wonderful. So Satan can keep trying all he, he wants. Yeah, yeah. It's, the Lord it's, is, I mean, you guys see it too, you know, Josh and Raisa. I mean, don't you see how the Lord prevails I every they're, time? They're, they're, With they're, every attempt you, you, you put out there. They're probably bitter that they can't mm -hmm. be a part of that because they did dumb things. Mm -hmm. They did absolutely dumb, ridiculous, juvenile things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hope the Lord forgives forgives them but you know what they need to repent they need to repent and you know if you and they say should that, do it publicly absolutely. because absolutely of they're, course they're blasting everyone's of course they're blow horning all people's problems mm -hmm. on their on their channel they should at least have the the humility the uh, we've been seeing false humility the whole time from the two you of can them see right just through false that puppy-like humility mm -hmm. that they're showing you in their videos they need to do a public repentance yep. it's yep. that's what's gonna happen There's, that's what has to happen don't say make a video that you are moving on no and then no. a year later come no. out with this that kind of sweeping and rehash things the under same the thing. rock situation is mm -hmm. not gonna work we nope. addressed our problems we addressed yeah. everything you said against us. We have proven that your accusations are totally insane, mm -hmm. that you are bitter on the inside, that you have really bad issues with, with yourselves and other people that come here. And you just need to repent. Yeah. You need to publicly repent. To repent. We have all we have all come out and made it clear everything that happened and mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. that's it that's all we can do and the <laughs> lord is gonna he's gonna turn this into a blessing just like he has every other time he's already turned it into a blessing he has he has it's been a, ble it's been a <laughs> blessing all all the t mm -hmm. from the time they they got thrown out yeah it's been a yeah. blessing praise it god it really has and mm -hmm. whoever the lord does not want here let me tell you, he moves them right he out. Moves them out. He moves them mm -hmm. right out. We don't even have to do anything. The Lord's on our side. Yes. We're yes. doing we're doing his work over here. We're mm -hmm. sticking in there for other people. We're genuinely helping other people. Yes. Selflessly that, helping yeah, other yeah, people. Yeah, they come here. We felt we give them our time. And that's exactly what we did for Raven too, you know. Yeah, we we fed her. Raisa I mean, is we, not gonna want her in their she home. She is not. For she more is than not. <laughs> I know for a fact that yeah, they say that they you know don't have the means to keep her there at their place. They just don't want her there. They don't want her it's there. It's not gonna happen. You know, it's, and, it's not gonna happen. They are playing the heroes. You guys are playing heroes mm -hmm, for now. Mm -hmm. But just like every other immature act that you have done, this also will crumble eventually yeah. that girl's gonna be in so much headaches i hope that they can deal with it yeah i really hope that they can deal with her yeah and and, and her state she's very unstable she needs help. and she, she needs, help. needs she does need a lot a lot of help and, and we tried the, mm -hmm. we tried and for the most part her husband was helping her the mm -hmm. most to cope with her social, oh yeah with her to social anxiety mm -hmm. yep oh yeah he had to he had to deal with it more than anybody mm -hmm. you know we would just see them once maybe twice a week for just the yeah, short, time, short that, time that she was here um but yeah you know i i can't imagine just the stress that john um it's was fine. was mm -hmm. under when she was you know with him and then now just the devastation raven your husband is devastated he is devastated and i really do i really truly hope that you will repent 
uh-huh. and and go back to your husband. I don't, at this, this is point, not of the at Lord. At this point, Heidi, I don't even know if that's an, an option. Yeah. I have no idea. But I'll tell you what, Raven, you you really need to question your marriage to Jesus at this point because yes. everything you did was unbiblical from yes. the first thought that you acted on to the last one you acted on this was not, not biblical. So that marriage to Jesus that you're talking about is really questionable. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't believe it's true. I don't believe it's it's happened. Did that happen in your mind? Mm-hmm. And you need to get with reality and really um, own up to all the things that you have just thrown to the wind your whole your whole family so that's yeah, all I need yeah. uh, that's all I have to say to Raven we spent enough time with you we were loving to you we were kind to you even when we caught you a bunch of times trying to eat our food I don't know what it was I think it was the social anxiety Raven would, I would come into the kitchen and I'd catch her trying to eat something from, from the table. And then she'd say, oh, I need to take the trash out. Really bizarre things. Yeah. So I And hope- even then, after, even after that, it was, we fed her. Anytime Every that she minutes. told me she was hungry, I went into my kitchen and I made her something. Or Sharda, Sharda was constantly cooking for her. She would ask, Sharda, you know, it's funny how she's so John, quick mm-hmm. to come out with these accusations that we are this horrible, wicked cult when she was sitting so comfy, cozy on their couch time after time, time yeah. and asking Sharda, is dinner going to be served tonight? When do we eat? Do I mean, we literally, eat? that was all she said while when she was here. When do we eat? When do we eat? You and know? just to think about all the time that my husband took to pray for her. He prayed for her on Skype. He mm-hmm. prayed for her in person. He prayed for her anytime she needed prayer. He also counseled them when they had a little argument with the uh, what was it a credit card or a bank card, a, a bank card mm-hmm. or something which he actually completely was siding For with her, her yeah and telling john why you don't you get just her get her a card, card. yeah it's because of chris it's that you had chris. that bank card raven yeah. and See? you know that yeah you know that yeah think about that think about that and your husband yeah. canceled that account because you snuck off with his baby in your belly without a cause because there is no there is no allegation allegation so it is without a cause because josh and Raisa spoke into your mind for for months for weeks that you were here sorry and that's exactly the fruit of it and you Mm -hmm. up and left so your husband's not going to give you access to what he provided for your relationship this kind of entitlement does not exist you need to grow up and smell the roses sweetheart Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that is not right to do to someone okay so you guys i think i'm gonna wrap it up here that's i think that's all i had to say Mm -hmm. i think i've clarified enough what happened I think I've owned up to my own um, shortcomings in my marriage that caused a lot of the fighting that you guys have heard about. And I truly was in a very immature position. And I was in a lot of emotional turmoil because I didn't understand how to deal with conflict or how to communicate properly or anything like that. My mother didn't teach me these things. I had to learn them the hard way and learn them on my own. And now that I've, I know better, I'm so sorry that I, I've caused this to happen where my husband and I will have to live with these accusations for the rest of our lives. Thanks to these people that that are not ministry Christ minded at all. Not at all. So I hope I made everything clear to you guys. Everything that Josh and Race are are saying that they think is happening right now, it's happening in their own bubble. It's mm-hmm. still whatever they left back here, they still think is happening in their own minds, in their own heads. They're make believing things. Those things are not true. We are 
in active ministry. We're having conferences. We're helping people get set free. We're praying for people. We have moved on. We are living great together. I'm loving my sister, Heidi. I fellowship with her all the time. I have a great friend in her, and she listens, and she can give me godly advice, and not advice to, like, ruin my life. No. You know? No. You know? So I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful to have a sister that is truly mature in the Lord, and going on her, her own journey you know things aren't going to be perfect all the time but at least we have someone to talk some yeah. sense into us yeah. time and time again you know so it's been it's been such a blessing that the lord has brought me out here and you are the only sister that i have nah. that you know i mean it's it's like we really truly have grown in in just our our genuine love for one another and I just want to say that I'm, I'm so thankful, too, for all of the counsel that you've done for me in my marriage because it, it can be hard from time to time. And, um, and with everything the Lord has taught you and all the growth he's done on you, he's done that so you could bless me and other sisters in the Lord. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful, the growth that he's done on, on all of us since being here and... Praise, praise the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. We don't deserve it. He's so good to us. Yeah. So we just, um, we wanted to just let you guys know um, the truth of everything. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate that this has to keep happening, but we understand it has to happen you know it has to happen it has to happen so the lord is strengthening us with every single time we are betrayed by people yes. that we can't couldn't even think would do such a thing you yeah. know and um yeah it's all for his glory in the end mm -hmm. all for his perfect judgment and glory so we're just gonna let him take care of it all and we're just He's gonna, gonna take the wheel. We're just gonna keep being <laughs> obedient and keep serving him. Yes. That's that's all he wants us to do anyway. Yes. He'll take care of the rest. So mm -hmm. all right. You guys be blessed yeah. and have a good day. Bye. Bye.